Hello and welcome, I guess, back in to the Throwing Bones podcast, uh, Inside Nebraska's Recruiting Podcast. I'm Senior Recruiting Analyst Greg Smith. I'm joined, as usual, uh, by Recruiting Analyst Nate Klaus. First things first, Nate, man, welcome back. Uh, and how are you? Yeah, I'm doing well, doing well, hanging in there. Uh, been a little hiatus, but uh <laughs> happy to get back after it and we got plenty to talk about that's for sure <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah since we like I feel like you know since we've been gone like, there's been quite a few things um that have happened uh but we'll kind of fast forward and kind of jump into kind of the Matt Rule era like it, it is here um it is like very hard to like wrap my brain around that it has only been a week since that Matt Rule introductory press conference, what I like to call a Matt Rule day, uh, where they did kind of that uh, unity walk with Rule and then kind of went into kind of the, the big press conference and had people talk afterwards. I guess I, I want to start here with you because we haven't, you and I have not really talked about this, though we've talked since the hire has been made. What were your first impressions of that day and kind of bringing Matt Rule in? Yeah, well, first of all, very impressed right, right off the bat. Um, you know, I know there were some people that were maybe a little upset, you know, Nebraska pulls off the the win in Iowa City and then turns right around the next day and news comes of making that that hire. Um, you know, I initially, I think a lot of people were excited, but also there were a lot of people that were like, well, man, this is maybe the best news that it's happened to the football team in quite a while. You know, let the guys kind of bask in their their glory a little bit longer. But I totally understand it from Trev Albert's perspective. You know, uh, he had an opportunity to take the national stage with yeah. announcing that and and having Matt Rule go on College Game Day and and all of that. But um, as far as the the ceremony announcing him, man, I mean they they made a big deal out of it, and rightfully so. I, I think that, like Trev Albert said, this was the longest coaching search in Nebraska football history, technically. Um, and so, and they got their, their number one guy and, and I, and I very, very do, you know, I believe that, uh, that he was one a uh, on the list and, and for them to go out and, and get that guy, it was a big deal. Uh, it, as far as my first impressions from what he had to say, now I couldn't, you know, I, I think everyone kind of figured he would win the press conference, but it was even better than what I had anticipated. Uh, he's, he's a great speaker. Um, you know, you could feel a certain level of genuineness, I, I think, uh, and excitement that he's here um, and that he's ready to get after it. And he hit on certain key points mm -hmm. that I think were important, you know, in terms of uh, wanting to win the, the line of scrimmage and recruiting being important as far as keeping kids home and hitting that 500 mile radius and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, overall, very, very impressed with with uh, Matt Rule so far and uh, and that overall, you know, kind of uh, show that they put on the day that he was officially announced on Monday. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things it's funny, though, too, because and this is I, I mean, I'm sure it's on purpose in a way because it's a staff led by him of professionals that have been there, done that on kind of this kind of rebuild project, right, that that they've done now twice, both at Temple Lane and Baylor, um, obviously him with different assistants, but also him being something that has come up quite a bit. And it's a nice transition point of, you know, when you mentioned him saying right away um, and being impressed by him saying right away about recruiting in state and keeping players home like everyone says that but not everyone goes out immediately and the first time that the contact period opens up which is this past friday goes out on the road and basically barnstorms the state and it wasn't just him there were a couple other assistants because oh, by the, the whole staff isn't in place so there were a handful of other assistants that were also hitting nebraska high schools as well um and that has already made a big impression um from what i've seen you know i've, I've talked to some high school coaches around the state um who <laughs> two buzzwords two things phrases and buzzwords that come up quite often already professional that has come up <laughs> quite a bit um organized passionate and which are all things that you mentioned off top right just noticing about um that press conference and it's something that i think that is it's easy to see why matt rule has won a lot of living rooms and a lot of high school coaches office over his coaching career yeah no doubt about it i, I think you're right every single head coach going back to you know <laughs> 
after after the kind of the new era of Nebraska football, if you will, when um, when Frank Solich was fired and Bill Callahan comes on, like every one of those coaches has said, we have to recruit at home. But do, saying it and doing it are, are two different things. Um, I wasn't surprised that that's the route that Matt Rule took in terms of spending that first day going out and barnstorming the state. Uh, I'd heard so much about um, how much or how big of an impact I should say that he made on Texas high school football coaches mm -hmm. um, that, that the entire Texas high school football coaches community, that association in Texas uh, grew to love Matt rule. I mean, tremendously during his, you know, what, three years or so right. at, at Baylor. Um, he was a speaker there, you know, at their, at their yearly conference, uh, I think twice. And one of the times that he did it, was after he had taken the North Carolina Panthers job, right? Uh, you know, and so he had he had no reason to fulfill that commitment to those coaches at that point in time. He was going to the NFL, uh, but he still he he was genuine enough. He's he I mean he's that type of person that he he uh, you know still spoke at their conference, and and I think that's you know in just a short amount of time he made a huge impression on on that state on those high school football coaches. So I'm very, very confident that he's going to be able to do the same thing with the Nebraska coaches and and really probably a lot of the coaches, um, you know, within the 500 mile radius or surrounding states as well. Yeah. And coaches that and whether it's here in Nebraska or those surrounding states, coaches that I think are kind of hungry for Nebraska to have more of a presence in their area. I'm sure you have heard this because I've definitely heard it, whether it's it's it definitely happens within the state. Um, but, you know, kind of in Kansas City, honestly, and, and outside of the 500 mile radius, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Texas. Right. Because I like Texas high school coaches have a fun kind of affinity for Nebraska based on kind of their their age and being kind of in that same age range as Matt Rule and remembering kind of the glory days um, of Nebraska and wanting them to recruit there. So that will be interesting. Uh, but I definitely think I, I agree with you 100%. Like, I think that he's going to make a quick impression on those guys. And part of that is, and we talked about kind of go, like saying it and then doing it, but he's also continued to do it. Like, I'm actually, I'm, I'm slightly surprised. So as of, as we're recording this on Monday night, like he was, he spent all day Monday in Nebraska, right? Right. Like he was here. Um, I know he went out to Creighton prep. Um, there was a coach out in Pierce. There was one in uh, Carter Nelson and Ainsworth as well. Um, and so they're still doing it. <laughs> they, they did not do yeah. it for one day, pay lip service and then jet out to, you know, insert their new spot, whether it's going to be Texas or, you know, spot recruiting Florida or out on the East coast. Um, I think that that's going to pay off. And one other thing too, on that note, about in-state recruiting is it's not just, we talked a lot about the high school coaches, the coaches, it's not just them that notice it. Uh, the players notice. So I talked to Danny Kalen after Nebraska's junior day. And that's where I want to kind of go next about this junior day that Nebraska put together very quickly um, yesterday on Sunday is that Kalen told me, Hey, I noticed that they were out there. They said at that press conference, they were going to be in the state and recruit guys and make it a priority. And people say that, but it was the very first thing they did. He knew Daniel Kalen knew that the first place, Place that Matt Rule went to was Lincoln High like that, that and I think that that sort of stuff matters um, a lot more than I think that that your average fan will probably maybe realize um, that these kids are definitely paying attention to where these kids where these coaches are going and spending their time and if they're actually making them a priority and I think that that's a great thing for where Nebraska needs to go when it comes to recruiting in state because it it's gonna this is gonna be a uh, it's gonna hurt a little bit but Nebraska hasn't been to a bowl game like at any of these high school, at any of these kids' high school careers, like going back like to middle school, like when they, when they remember them being in a bowl. So they really have to start from ground zero. And I think they've kind of hit the ground running on that. Yeah, they, they definitely have. And I think it's important to note that, you know, the visits that he's made in state, they haven't just been, you know, for a quick photo op and mm -hmm. stopping by to shake some hands and, and go on to the next it's it's been genuine sit down you know have a meeting talk ball talk you know uh philosophies uh you know talk about 
you know, how, how they want to lay things out in the future with the program, so on and so forth. So, I mean, it's legitimate, genuine conversations that are taking place, not just, you know, going in, shaking hands, kissing babies, right. taking pictures and getting out of getting out to the next one. Yeah, funny that you mentioned that because uh, Marcus Satterfield did actually hold someone's baby um, <laughs> while he was in Ainsworth. I'm not 100% sure whose baby that was, if that was Coach's kid or who who that was, but it was a great photo op. If you haven't seen that on Twitter, it's very funny. Um, you should go check that out. Uh, Carter Nelson, definitely a 2024 kid that Nebraska will not want to let get out of the state. Um, and so that's really interesting as well. But one of the things, too, Nate, I wanted to ask you, you know, we mentioned that junior day um, that Nebraska was able to put together and it was um basically all in-state prospects um both offered kids um they got they were able to get some commits back in town too that that are kind of local as well but i gotta want to ask it this way to you because these transitions are very hard like there's a lot going on in these transitions how impressive is it to you that they were able to even put together a junior day it wasn't a week it was six days uh, with matt rule being in lincoln yeah, that's, I mean, I, you can't put into words how uh, difficult planning something like that uh, is. I mean, you've got a million moving parts right now, right? From the from the point that Matt Rule was officially announced, you know, on that Monday until the the time that, that uh, the junior day actually took place, right. there's a million different moving parts. So, uh, for for them to have pieced that together, put it off, made it really uh, welcoming and relaxed, and like giving those guys an opportunity to to come on campus, uh, to be around the new staff in in like a really low key kind of relaxed, non like low pressure type of environment, you know, I, I think was huge. Um, and and for them to pull it off without a hitch, uh, now maybe they're worse. There's you know. The, what what the kids experience and what the what the you know optimal <laughs> right. experience plan was can sometimes be two different things. But uh, I mean the feedback was one hundred percent positive, mm -hmm. and so I mean anytime that happens, I, I think you gotta you gotta tip your hat to the staff for putting that together. But uh, for that to have happened in such a short amount of time and have been planned and and put into action is pretty impressive. Yeah, it definitely is. And it's one of those things, too, where it's actually to the more I think about it, it was kind of the perfect setup to do this, right? So you're going to get you've already built up some goodwill by going out around the state um, and making sure that you make these guys the first priority, right? So you've got that goodwill built up and then you have them all come out or as many of them as possible for a junior day, it's, it does, it's more of a family feel and it's more relaxed, like you said. And I know that that was the goal um, and, and talking to the, some players that were there, they all um, mentioned, you know, whether it was Kaylin or Tristan Alvano or Tyson Terry, any of those guys were like, you know, it was a really relaxed day um, to be able to play games. It's so much to the point that you saw, I don't know if you saw um, Julie Noonan um, playing ping pong with Matt Rule, um, like those sorts of things. But the, the funny thing is, is those things matter when it comes to just building those relationships and keeping things casual. Um, it, it's always a really good sign to see that kind of a stuff, especially on that very first one. I, I could not, I'm with you. I could not be more impressed with the fact that they even put that together. Um, at first, I know the initial, initial plan was to potentially host official visitors. That would have been nuts. Um, but it, they will host them this week and we'll get to that. And there'll be plenty of that when we come back later in the week as well. So, so put a pin in that conversation uh, because there's a lot of moving parts there and they are they are going to probably host double digit of official visitors this weekend um but it is a really impressive thing to see them put together that type of a junior day and to to hone in on those local prospects that i do think need a, a lot of love to kind of be brought back in the fold but they're also hungry to be back in the fold and that's why I kind of want to go with like, you know, in talking to Daniel Kalen, and we've got a full interview up with him um, at Nebraska Rivals, um, Nebraska.Rivals.com, um, where he talked about really feeling like a priority for this staff right now. He's had a weird recruitment, like, and I kind of detailed this um, in the story, if you really just if lay it out, where before his sophomore season, he picked up offers from Florida State and Nebraska. So everyone expected, oh, no, here comes the, the next big thing, right? Well, he didn't go out necessarily played that well during his sophomore year he kind of split time um, with another quarterback as they Bellevue West made another deep run um, in the state playoffs and didn't ultimately win it um, but 
it, to his credit, and I give him a ton of credit for this, Kalen, he went to work um, between his sophomore and junior season, and he got a lot better. Like, I remember seeing him during the summer at a camp and thinking, he, A, he's gotten bigger, his arm is, is stronger, he's got a quicker release, and then to see him then put that together for a really big junior season has been great. Uh, and so it's just been a really interesting one just for his development. But then in his recruitment, he gets that offer from Nebraska, and then they basically ghosted him under the <laughs> previous, previous staff, I guess I should say. Then when yeah. Mickey took over, he becomes kind of more of a priority, and he comes to a couple of games, you know, like, okay, it's rolling. But then that staff is basically let go, insert Matt Rule, and he told me that Matt Rule, the very first conversation he had with him said – I making you a priority. I don't want you to leave the state and I want you to be at Nebraska. That's a huge deal. Yeah, it's a huge deal. Um, and for, for someone to say that and show you that they're wanting to follow through on that mm -hmm. is, is very, very important. Um, cause you know, when you, when you offer somebody that young, uh, in, in contact is limited, uh, mostly really whether, yeah. in, unless he's calling the staff, it's it's limited to whether or not he's making it to campus right, right. Uh, because when you're a sophomore in high school I mean the coaches can there's there's limits on what they can be um, or how that how much they can be communicating with you so um, for him to be on campus the first weekend that Matt Rule is here for Matt Rule to tell him hey I'm making you a priority I don't want you to leave the state um, for him to come to a junior day and not necessarily like be talked at um, you know, it's not like there was a hundred kids in the room and, and each coach got up in front and, right. you know, addressed the crowd and talked at them and, and then, okay, thanks for coming, you know, shake the hands and on your way out. It was, you know, it was very low key, uh, very relaxed talking with Daniel Kalen and like yep. starting to build that relationship. Uh, that is, that is key. And, and I think that that's really going to pay dividends, uh, down the road. And, and it, it certainly made an impression on him too. Yeah, definitely did. And I thought that he, one of the, the interesting things, and it's funny, when we're in this phase of kind of the new staff and all of that, everything that we're told by coaches, parents, um, prospects alike is new, right? It's all new to us about, and we're all trying to piece together what this is going to end up looking like. And so I thought it was really interesting that Kalen got to sit down with, with offensive coordinator Satterfield and really watch film, right? He watched those last couple of um, South Carolina games, he said. Um, and he said he had looked on YouTube and watched a couple of them on his own beforehand, which that's a very quarterback thing to do uh, yes. to go check that out ahead of time. Um, and so he said, though, that he felt that he really fit into Satterfield's offense moving forward. And they want to do a lot of play action um, and be balanced on offense. And they they don't necessarily need, you know, somebody to be running around all the time being a true dual threat, but someone that can make the right reads and get the ball out on time. So that was good to hear, too, because quarterbacks and fits within offense really can dictate how much a kid is recruited. Um, and, and so to have a local kid right there in the 24 class that you could potentially be a building block for that class for Matt Rule and a quarterback at that would be really huge. Um, and so we'll kind of see where that goes. I think things are trending in the right direction um, with Kalen, but moving forward, you know, next steps for this staff, like they're on the road right now trying to scour the country, but I guess what are the next steps that you see for, I guess, week two uh, for the staff here during the contact period? Yeah. Well, first of all, let me just say I'm I'm impressed by um, you know the the types of of coaches that that Matt Rule is putting together. You can tell he wants young, hungry recruiters out there. Um, he wants guys that are excited to to coach and teach, but also excited to get on the road and like and you know kind of uh, you know use those connections that they may have wherever they may have them and and recruit to Nebraska. And so and we're seeing that right now. They're they're covering a lot of ground. Um, you know, obviously with an opportunity to host official visitors this, this coming weekend, um, that's kind of what I think you, everyone needs to be watching for is, okay, where are the, where are these coaches going? Who are they zeroing in on? Um, you know, whether that's players that are newly offered players that have been re-offered by this staff, um, or even players that are maybe committed elsewhere that, that, um, that they're trying to snag away from, uh, yep. from their, their pledge, their verbal pledge. So, um, to me, that's, that's the important thing and, and kind of also, you know, 
piecing together where the main recruiting territories are going to be right. um, or, you know, where the priorities are going to be. I, I think uh, with a guy like EJ Barthel, uh, the new running backs coach, uh, we're going to see him be, do, you know, doing a lot of work in, in Philadelphia and in, in specifically in the state of New Jersey. Uh, that's where a lot of his ties are. So I think that, you know, that's something to to pay attention to. So um, that's kind of what I'm looking for this week is uh, who are their priorities right now that, that maybe they want to try and do their best to get signed uh, in this early signing period, right. uh, or at the very least have come in on an official visit uh, before, before the dead period. Yeah. And I think that another thing to add to that too is, is, who can they get in for official visits that are transfers as well um, as we're already right. kind of seeing that um, as well. And, and it's, and that, that is the the new wrinkle um, to all of this that will kind of help. I think either, it, I don't want to say, say it this strongly, but I have no other way to say it, to kind of determine how quickly Matt rule can get things off the ground. Um, I think that if they can land some, some key transfers on both the offensive and defensive line, we'll kind of see what happens with quarterback um, depending on Casey Thompson. That's really a, the big domino thing of things people are looking for this week. Well, if, if Casey made an announcement um, sometime this week, one way or the other, that would be big as well. Um, just so that they can know, right. They kind of need to know whether or not they need to go out and get one, uh, get a, a portal quarterback um, this cycle, would, which would really turn everything up on its head yeah i mean there's the hit i would consider casey a, a huge linchpin in this yeah. whole process uh if you're able to keep him in the fold and and have him you know potentially announce that hey i'm staying you know or whatever uh that that could kind of give you buoy you know a lot of a lot of momentum um and, and maybe even help your recruiting pitch to some other transfer portal uh, yeah. guys out there that are looking for a new home. Okay, hey, I know I can go to, to Nebraska, play for Matt Rule, um, and Casey Thompson's going to be my quarterback. You know, he's a, kind of a known commodity. So, uh, yeah, that's that's huge. Uh, what kind of guys they can get along the offensive and defensive lines out of the portal early, and then, of course, what Casey Thompson decides to do. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that is, you know, it's funny, it, 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 it has been a little bit to me lost in all of this and, and that over our purposes of, of recruiting and being recruiting focused here. Uh, but like you said, it is a huge linchpin for things because that is, I'm 100% with you there. It is a big part of the pitch. If Casey Thompson comes out and says, hey, I'm back, um, you can go to any receiver that you're talking to because they know who that is. Like, it's so helpful to be able to go and show them actual highlights and tell them what's going on. Um, that he's going to be around it, it there's a big trickle down effect to that um, so we'll definitely have a watch out for that and like I mentioned we'll, we'll be back later this week as well to kind of talk more um, about the visit and do a vis full visit preview of what's coming up for this weekend because like I said Nebraska will host its first uh, full official visit weekend under Matt Rule we're expecting him to have double digit official visitors that list is a little fluid now at this point as of Monday um, so I could tell you names but I don't want to have to go back <laughs> and, and circle back um, to that, I will tell you that Jaden Doss, uh, the Kansas City wide receiver, he'll definitely be in some of those commits um, because you have to remember, I should say, that um, commits for Nebraska can take an additional official visit this year based on that coaching change. That's a new rule that's come about here recently, um, and Nebraska will definitely want to get those kids back on campus to kind of get to know everybody um, and have as much time around those guys as possible. Uh, but we'll have much more on that later in the week. Make sure you're subscribed to the, to the Inside Nebraska YouTube YouTube channel uh, to be able to get these videos directly in your feed. Like this video, tell a friend. Also, make sure to keep it locked on Nebraska.rivals.com, and we will catch you guys later.